you up again today ancient of days I worship you the great I am you are exalted the eternal king of glory I worship you I worship you are you there I worship you I give you the glory Lord thank you Father in Jesus most precious name we give thanks we're going to take this on when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me you just have to think you have to look at God in the picture of his love and power and mercy amen because I know he loves you and whatever is disturbing you they're going to turn to praise you are not, I say they're going to turn to testimony and the name of the Lord shall be glorified in your life in the name of Jesus when I think of the goodness of Jesus all he has done for me hallelujah my very soul hallelujah oh praise
I'll say it in word. Thank God for his blessings. Thank the Lord for the gift of good health. I'm teaching you what to do now. Say, Lord, I thank you for your blessings on my life. I thank you for the gift of good health. I thank you for your great, great grace and mercies that I've enjoyed. Thank you for being the strength of my life. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I worship you. I adore you. I magnify you. I give you my worship, Lord. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' most precious name, we give thanks. Now, you're going, you're going to take two prayer points. You're going to ask God. Can you say, Lord, I receive the heart and the spirit of faith in the name of Jesus. Can you say, I receive the heart, I receive the spirit of faith in the name of Jesus. Can you ask God to give you the heart? Come on, say to the Lord, say, Lord, I ask for the heart and spirit to have faith in you, to trust you. A challenge situation like this, Lord, give me the heart. Give me the spirit of faith, Lord, in you, in the name of Jesus. Give me the heart and the spirit of faith, in the name of Jesus. Can you say, I receive an awakening of my faith. Lord, awaken me this morning. Deliver me from every depression. Deliver me of, from anything that weighs me down. I receive strength to receive from God what he's going to say to me in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Now, I pray that you be empowered to draw from God this morning. I arrest every spirit of doubt. I take authority over any power that weakens in God's presence. I cast you out of here. I declare, let your children be awakened. We ask for spirit of faith. We ask for hearts to exercise our faith. And we ask for open heavens on our life. Open our eyes to see you right in your house in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's be seated. You are blessed. First I'd like to tell the new student just getting admitted into the university you have to be very careful and you have to carry yourself with wisdom. There are people that hibernate within the university and around university to try to catch new innocent students for wicked purposes. Some for courtesy, some to get you into certain strange groups. They will tell you it's a good place to be. You have to be focused and know why God has brought you here. I pray the Lord will help you. He will deliver you from trap in Jesus' name. And also for all of you whose admission hasn't gone through, you went to pre-degree and all that, it's got about 60%. You've not seen your admission. Stop worrying. You will be admitted. Within the next few days, so many, you know, I think they have just done it by the third of the admission. So, we still good, expect about 70, so you know how big it is. And I know between now and Wednesday, you're going to be seeing your platform changing. So stop worrying. Stop worrying. And I pray for some of you who think you will never be admitted. God is going to surprise you. And you're going to have great testimony. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, our tract for November is part of wisdom. Part of wisdom. Part of wisdom. Praise the Lord. And I will enjoy the ushers and others to give to everyone. Just have a copy. Read through. You know, we're showing you the way to walk in wisdom. Challenge students, young people, 
collect a copy. I'm giving a copy to you because we use it to evangelize in secondary school. But I know that many of you also need the wisdom. Amen. So that I'm not evangelizing the world and leave you alone. That's why you are taking a copy. And make sure you read it and act on the word of God. May the Lord help you in Jesus' name. Today I'm going to be speaking on a message that is titled Action of Faith. Can everybody say it? Action of Faith. Action of Faith. Now, in the world, we have believers in Christ <coughs> who have decided to trust God. And we have people in the world who don't believe anything. They trust their strength. They move by every scientific indicator that is on the earth. Permit me to say as I begin to preach this morning that the message I'm preaching to you today is not asking you to abandon science. Science is the basic minimum in life, in living. Science is the basic minimum in life. Because that is what human wisdom can do. Are you with me? So you accept, you know you have to prepare your food in certain way by sound knowledge, physical human knowledge. And you do it that best way. You know you have to drink good water. You apply normal human wisdom. Faith never cancels the need to act right. Am I communicating? Faith never suggests foolishness in normal life behavior. But a life of faith suggests that you act on what the Lord says. Act. Trusting God, trusting his words. And I want to tell you, anytime God speaks, his word is backed up by himself. Praise the Lord. So he's not telling you to go and bring up foolish behavior and say God is in it. No. So I'm raising that as I am. I'm starting to talk about actions of faith. And the goal is to let you have the ABC of what to do. Especially in a time like this. <laughs> Let's go into the scripture. We took it in the Bible reading. We take it again. James chapter 2, and I start from verse 14. What does it profit, my brethren? So this message is to people who are believers, who have chosen to trust God for their life. What does it profit you? If someone says he has faith but does not have works, can faith save him? What he's saying here is that every faith that you are exercising that does not motivate, definite, supporting, consistent action is not faith. It is just somebody confirming that they say Jesus is Lord. He is Lord. We all believe it. Even the devil knows Jesus is Lord. People misinterpret this place. What they say is that just help yourself. That's the action they say. Do something. No. What he's saying here is everywhere God wants you to take a step of faith, there is always a prescription of a corresponding what? action. Am I communicating? And many times, many believers that have their testimonies 
and those who only all their life listen to testimony but have none are dis di distinguished or differentiated because they are act they carry acting faith one carry sleeping not neutral faith you go to all churches where you don't even see people talk about testimony they believe God but they have neutral faith but the faith that works the faith that produces result is faith that acts why because the faith I'm speaking about today is faith that have confidence in the almighty and that leads that person who has confidence in the almighty to act in the direction of what God is saying about his situation so faith real faith living faith hearts a c t s every faith you have every prayer you pray every thing you do with god that does not prompt definite positive action is not faith that's why when you see somebody like the woman with the issue of blood he said if i may but touch what the hem of his garment i will be what i'll be made old and she acted in the direction of the inspiration in her and got the result. Oh, I'm in need. No one naira in my pocket. And somebody said, the Lord is my shepherd. That's I not what? My father holds the cattle on what? On the thousand hills. And you are asking God, Daddy, I need funding from you now. I'm on the edge. Arise for me. That prayer alone is a action. Am I communicating? It's an action of faith because you are saying I am trusting who? Rather than murmuring, rather than grumbling and all that. Listen very carefully. The whole world is under the same condition. What do I say we are under? Everybody? There is terrible condition of economic storm in the whole world now. And for us in Nigeria, you see fair prices, you wake up tomorrow, you don't know how much you're going to meet it. For all my engagement yesterday, I spent about 59000 on fuel in a single day. You know what that means to me? And many of the fuel you buy, you even wonder the way they burn now. They burn faster. I don't know whether you have to be observant. They burn faster. Economic storm. That suggests, how am I going to keep going till the month we end? Financial difficulty to meet basic needs of life. You are selling, you see that demand is falling. You are a business person, people are owing you and they are not paying. It's the, 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 that's what we are battling with now. Or you have a condition of sickness that is threatening your life. And appear there will be no hope. Listen to me. You are not going to be the first to face that. You need a job. You graduated three years ago. You see trekking on the streets. Things are difficult. People knew you have graduated. Those who used to help you are no longer sending help. They believe you should find your level. That's the condition we are in. Or you are facing a relationship that is not working. You don't know where it is going to lead to. You just don't understand. Or there are things in your life in which in the secret 
you are crying. You know, we can be jumping, but sometimes you get into the secret and you are shedding tears. Listen to me, they are normal life. Pastors to cry before God in the secret. Is somebody hearing my voice? Secret tears. And say, God, when will this happen? Is this harm going to die? The world here is a place where as you begin to grow into your teens here, you begin to know that except you take a stand and demand what you need from the world, it does not hand it over to you. Hello? Because anything you want to take, you may have 1,000 people that want to take it. So you have to take a stand, not only with your brain, with the almighty God who set up the universe to come in, into the picture with you. All kinds of strange surprises in the world. Sometimes you are trying to mentor your child and somebody come from nowhere and carry that child away. And you see your child trusting in the strange person than you who brought the person, who gave back to the child. How many of you have experienced that before? Go and ask parents, they will tell you. You see your child trusting an outsider. Calling them their lover. And promoting their love about the love of their parents. I say to hell with my parents. I'm going to go this way. These are surprises that happen here. Or you see your child going in a way you don't, you never could imagine your child will go. And you begin to say, is God fair to me? This morning, I'm going to get to read the testimony of a man of God who died at the age of 86 years, but whose life was threatened by terminal disease. You're going to see what he said under that condition before we go into the world. And I've asked them to read it directly from the book. And I'm talking about no other person but Kenneth E. Ege. How many of you know the name Ege? Okay, thank God many know it. If you don't know it, Ege is an apostle of faith. Who by the grace of God became a great man of God. But when he started off his life, it was like as if he had no chance to live. And as we go through today's message, I decree everything challenging your life. May they hand over in the mighty name of Jesus. If you have been carrying any disease in your body and they told you it won't work, they have written their own report. Everyone will rewrite the report today. Are you sure you are in the church? Can I hear a better amen from you? Yeah, that's what the Lord will do today. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are going to see the Lord touching you with his heavenly finger in the mighty name of Jesus. You are going to see him wiping away your tears. You are going to see him healing you. You are going to see him lifting you. You are going to see somebody who has forgotten you remembering you in the mighty name of Jesus. You're going to see the great hand of God on your business again. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, I want to call a, a pastor, Adenle, a beloved brother. I want you to read those areas I start in that book in page 144 and 145. And please listen to him carefully. Yeah. Many years ago, on the bed of sickness, before I saw these truths in God's words, I didn't know I could be healed. For a while, I went through a mental state where I really blamed God. Hmm. I said to the Lord, Lord, you know that you have been better to others than you have been to me. Hmm. For instance, there is Owen, with whom I started first grade. 
he lived within a block of our house. I am saved now, but when I was a sinner, I was never as mean as he is. And he has never been sick. While I have been sick all my life, afflicted with a heart condition. God bless you. You will read the second one. What he's saying that if you don't understand the story is that as a young boy was growing up in primary, in secondary school, and has a colleague. Now, but he grew up with a terrible heart condition and blood disease that was classified as terminal. Now, this friend of his in school has always been very healthy, strong, bouncing up and down. And he looked at a kind of God that will create him the way he is. And that friend of his, and then he decided, I'm going to give my life to Jesus. He gave his life. There was no difference. Am I communicating? And in fact, even the one that didn't give his life is fine. What's wrong with me? That was a worry of a man who ended up to become an apostle of teaching faith. I don't know what has been running your heart. Sometimes you feel God is unfair to you. Maybe your younger brother is always better. You don't know why you are worse. Today, the Lord will open your eyes of understanding. Are you there? You will see a good, great God Amen. at work in your life. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Read the second portion. Then I would say, Lord, there's another boy who lives behind us. He is big and muscular and stout. He is the kind of fellow who takes the other guy's girlfriends away from Are them. you listening? This boy looked so masculine. Here I am, incapacitated, and my heart doesn't beat right. God bless you. This boy has been an, has an automobile. It has the latest of everything in it. He, he got that because he was a burglar. It doesn't work. The authorities just haven't caught up with him yet. I was never as mean as he is either. Lord, it looks like you have been better to him than you have been to me, and I have to die. Praise the Lord. Now, at that point, the doctor told him at the age of 15, just be prepared to go. Go and sit down, my brother. When I get to the next one, I'll call you. Just be preparing to die. Every science, it's not in Africa, in the U.S., where medical science could be classified what? The best medical science told again prepare to do what to go and so he then tried to give his life maybe that will work of course it worked but the problem with him when he gave his life to Christ is that he was still using his brain praise the lord what did i say what he's still using you know our greatest enemy is our human nature you can see him comparing himself with what with somebody else. It must be that you are better. God is discriminating. To him, he felt, life shouldn't be like this for me. Now I've given my life. He has not given his own. He is better than me. Why should I live a life incapacitated? Now, the true story today is that that man got off that bed against the advice of the doctor that he would die and preach for close to 60 years the gospel of faith all over the world. He imparted people like Baba Deboye, imparted people like Oyedeko that when they are talking about their stand of faith and altar today, they say it's traceable to who? To his altar. Amen. Is anybody in the house today, you are thinking God is unfair to you? You look at somebody else, you feel life is greener in his life. Why is it that it's only you that has a problem? Why is it that it's you? You don't have enough money to pay school fees. You have to bear. Why, why, why? Where is God? Is he really alive? Why am I handling this problem and I can't just get off it and find my level in life? I am, we are reading from a documented book that is globally sold. 
You want to read it, I'll give it to you. It's a book, the title is Faith. It's Faith. Because as I begin to teach you faith this morning, action faith, the problem with man is the action. Am I communicating? You hear, but we don't act. And when you don't act, you cannot obtain God's result. You can't have his result. Now, let's move further to a scripture. Matthew chapter 7. In Matthew chapter 7, what I want to show you is the condition of the world. And many times when we think that something about us is peculiar that God is not listening to us. As I'm ministering this morning, the Lord will prove himself that he loves you even more than some people you think he loves you more than in the mighty name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 7. I'm reading verse number 24. Matthew chapter 7 <coughs> and verse 24. The Bible says, Therefore, whoever hears this saying of mine, I'm talking about action of faith. Faith act. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to what? A wise man who built his house on what? On the rock. The next verse. And the rain descended and the flood came and the wind blew and beat on that house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock. Now verse 26. We are looking at two sets of people. Somebody who obeys and do the word. Another one who does it. Verse 26. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on what? On the sun. Now the author and the finisher of our faith is the one speaking here. Who is speaking here? Somebody? The author and the finisher of our faith is saying, when I tell you to do something and you act on them, you are a wise man. When I tell you to do something, you assent to it, but you don't act. He said, you are a foolish person. Why? Because the work with God we not bring profit when you cannot act on his words. Verse 27. And the rain, he then went again. He said, it's a foolish person who beat his house on the sand. Verse 27. And the rain descended, the flood came, the wind blew, and beat on that house, and it fell. And great was his fall. Now, the first, what the first thing I want to bring out here, listen very carefully. These two group of people are under the same condition. What is the condition? Rain, Abby, wind, fall. What this Bible first wants to appreciate is that everybody in the world is going through the same trials and what? And temptations. We are all under the same economic environment. It's like when they say there was famine in the time of Abraham. Everybody was under it. In this case, the storm, the wind, the rain, the two group of people mentioned here, the wise and the foolish, were under that condition. Your parents are also under it. Is somebody listening to me today? We are all in the world. And the world itself had so many stumbling conditions that can make people stumble. Trials of our faith, delay here and there. We are all on that. But he said, somebody took the, the difference between the result, both get. I wrote it, I said, the difference in the nature of result is their action. Am I communicating? The nature of step that we take. Every day as a pastor, my own testimony, that I walk consistently in faith. 
I immediately see his hand. Immediately see his hand. Sometime I will go, hold the Lord. I was in a revival meeting head on campus. Why some people are joking? Sometimes I pray to the point that I shed tears in the same program. Yeah, I'm invited as an important personality. I see somebody who is playing, who is acting, me at my level. As a pastor, as a professor, I knelt down the field and I'm digging some things out with God in the context of the meeting. Sometimes I will move away from where I cannot be distracted so that I can hold God as he is. But somebody else, they say, say, amen. He can't open his mouth. <laughs> In the same meeting. Hello? Are you hearing me? Where? Somebody else is there. There is no focus, nothing in the heart that is holding God on. It's just empty hearted before God. Nobody. Hameless. And you say God will give the same result. It's not possible. It's not possible. The, this story I've told you of the wise and the foolish builder is simply that they acted differently. Different action. One ignore the word and didn't do it. Another one did it and testimony started flowing in. Look at the testimony today. A protractedly delayed PhD that appear will not happen. But somebody kept on holding to God. And it's now history. Praise the Lord. It's now what? History. It's history. I've seen some people who cry and come and feel they will not graduate. And we didn't just, because he took a step. Someone said, go and see that man. He just took that step. Who told you to come and see me? And as he's saying it, I will be listening to the Holy Spirit. What do I do about this? And just one simple little step. And the whole thing will change. A particular sitting I won't tell you the nature of the position he was trying to undo the institution he was trying to manage and difficult, doesn't know what to do. I just appear from nowhere and I said this, 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 this. And in his own office, in his institution, we summoned a meeting. And by the time I left, he woke up the second morning and said, Thank you for visiting. Action of faith. You, I, I'm praying today after this message. Each of you listening to me, either online or right on site here, you will see how God turns situation around for good. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't forget what I'm explaining under this session. The same condition, different action. And what makes differences in life is our action. Listen to me. All our outcome in life, even in our scientific step, in our education, in the same class where they are teaching us, is the differences in our responses. You see 20 students in a class. Some is focused. They take down their notes well. They read. The teacher warned them this is how to go. They follow it. Another one ignores it. Another one doesn't come to class every time. Another one write the notes upside down. And when the result comes, different what? Result. Different results. And what makes the difference in the result is not God. It is different responses. Am I communicating? It's the same in faith. When you take what God is saying for granted, when you take the word of God for a joke, when you don't value his power, you can't get the best of God. There is no way it will ever happen. There is no way it will ever work when the word, because God operates by the light of his ways. May the Lord grant you wisdom in the name of Jesus. Now, what are the actions of it? Let's quickly pick them up. What are the actions of it? Number one, 
The first action of faith as a believer is to make the words of God your own. I will explain it. Everybody, what is the first action of faith? Everybody, make the words of God what? Your own. Many of us, when you read some words, say, yeah, it's, it's David. God was talking to David there. Some will say, it's Paul. Talking to who? The Corinthian. <laughs> Are you seeing that? It's the history. Some people see the Bible as the culture of the Hebrew. How many of you have had people say that before? In the culture of the Hebrew. It is not to them. Me, my Bible says, God, the word is written for us. To whom the end of the word has come. Mm -hmm. It's not yours. It's theirs. The first thing you must speak from church today. Look at our anchor. I shall flourish. That's not the way it was written in the Bible. Abby. But we own it. Abby. That's faith. Faith holds the first thing. If you want to begin to profit and see you walking in dominion under this difficult time, you must do what? Hold the word of God. Let's see how that scripture is written in the Bible. Psalm 92 verse 12. Let's read it and you see how we do. That's, can we read it now? You see it's general. The righteous are do what? Shall flourish like a palm tree. It shall grow like what? But we came honing it. Look at the way we rewrite it. You say, I shall flourish. Like what? And I shall grow like what? A cedar. Where? In you hold that. The, anybody, you are saying the righteous. That's general. What is God saying in that scripture to you? As I'm preaching today. What is God saying to you? Is it the word of the pastor or the word of God? I am going to flourish like a palm tree. Because that's what the word of God says. I will grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Why? How do I know that? Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 said... God watches his word. The Lord God said, you have seen well, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 says, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform what? My word. Another person says, God watches his word. To do what? To perform. To do it. God watch over it. God has seen it to make sure that it is established. Every scripture, there is a God, power, grace, glory that backs it up. I am teaching you the way of faith. That is the way of survival now. And faith is relevant in every situation. You may be very rich, you will need faith to survive. Because there are junctions you are going to get to where your money will fail. Am I communicating to somebody? There are points where money will fail. That it only be your faith to draw from God that will rescue you. I shall grow. Because it's the word of God, it will be performed in my life. So, Make the word of God from today your own. Anytime you are looking at the scripture, begin to look at his promises and turn it to your prom promise to you. God told Abraham, I will make you great. I will make you a blessing. Your children will possess the gate of their enemy. You will lay on or down. It's my own too. Because I'm a seed of what? Abraham by faith. I am of that line. So it's not just God's promise to Abraham. It becomes God's promise to who? Somebody? To you. That's the first action. That's where life of faith begins. In that case, you are trusting the word of God with all of your hearts. God said it. It will come to pass. 
You stop leaning on your understanding. Situation may tell you you are going down. Say the Bible says, let the weak say I'm, I'm what? You own it. I am going up. I am not going down. I am going up. I am not going down. And when your heart is immersed in that inspiration, you see the, the Lord appear. Within the current situation where salaries have become completely irrelevant to living, I have seen God supply needs. I have seen people that don't call me for finance send money to me. I look at them. How did this person remember me? I said, Pastor, how did he remember? Why? I am leaning on. I don't worry. I cast that care on him and hold him. You can see me going. You see my mouth moving. My mouth is never quiet. Am I communicating? He's saying something of faith. Silver and gold belong to you. And I know with God, I cannot be stranded. And you see him performing. He's still the almighty. Who is he, everybody? Who fed his own people with manna in the wilderness? Who gathered quails from all over the world, round about the camp of the Israelites, and surprised them with abundance of provision of meat? He's still the Lord. He's still the Lord. I have to trust him for anything you see us do. Even programs, we trust God to do it. Oh, they say we want to buy it. Okay, wait. I'll get back to you. At that point, there may not be sufficient physical money, but I'll get, I will say we, we have money. It will come. And I will transfer. Because I am waiting on God. My heart is resting on the supplier. The one who has the capacity to meet all needs. May the Lord give you understanding spirit. I got into my room yesterday night and I was looking for a book. That book. Because sometimes my spirit will go into look for this book. I can't find it. Now I went to where I put it. It's not there. What's wrong? I've forgotten that when I was going to retreat during the week, I packed it along. And so it's still in my leather box because I have not uh, loosed I have not brought all the things there. I have. So I said, well, uh, I went to the room, went to the study, went to prayer room in the house. I can't find it. What is going on? Whether with the book or not, I am moving forward. As I said, it, I remember where the book is. But if I became depressed as a frustrated man, I will remain frustrated. I said, to hell with the book. I took my phone and I started doing what I want to do. And immediately the light come. You must never accept that there is an end of the road for you in life. Am I communicating to somebody? What do I say you must not accept? There is no end of the road to your finance. Is somebody saying amen to that? There is no end of the road to you in matter of good health. In the mighty name of Jesus. The devil will say, how do you know it? Because by his strength, I have been what? I I have been healed. Action of faith. You own the world. God is looking for people that are, that's why I pray that God will give you the spirit of faith. The heart of faith. It's, it brings miracles. If I take my car key and I'm driving out of the church and I stay here late and I'm leaving here at 2 a.m going back home because when I'm working on a document, I want it finished before I leave. Every door that I need to open on my way must open. Must open. I just believe the doors are open and I keep moving. And they open. Never will any door be closed against you again in the name of Jesus. Because I'm speaking the truth, every door you are knocking, I command by the key of David, may they be opened unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus. You keep looking unto Jesus. You keep holding his words. 
That is the first action. You own the word. Looking unto the speaker, the integrity of his majesty, the immutability of the power of his words. You hold it. And then you begin to wonder, is this how God works? Can God make things this easy for me? That is your father in heaven. You cannot afford to die without experiencing his miracles. It is, you are walking with God in vain when you don't enjoy his power. Am I communicating? You are brought into faith to enjoy the power that faith commands. And that same power that brought the woman with the issue of blood out of 12 years of affliction is the power that was activated when Jesus died on the cross for you. The power that brought the prodigal son out of his mess. He was himself before. Glorying in his naughtiness and foolishness. But well, got to a point. Why am I here? By the way God created me. I was born by one of the richest men on the earth. Why am I here poor? And he, he, the Bible said he preached to himself. What did he do, everybody? The, what did the prodigal son do? Somebody? He preached to himself. I am going to my father. And I will tell my father, I am not worthy to be called your child again. Just make me one of what? In fact, there the Bible said he compared the higher servant of his father. To his, he said, even my, the higher servant of my father are better. That we are, I'm going to become, I will go and be serving my father and be his higher servant. He got there to be restored. Total restoration for somebody there. In the mighty name of Jesus. Look at the book of Psalm 27 verse 1. In Psalm 27 verse 1, the Bible says, The Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of who? Of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Anytime you take this and say, the Lord is the strength of my life. His strength takes over your strength. Am I communicating? You own it. You see you walking at another level. Running at a level of God's strength. If they are so real. Listen to me. I have carelessly used my strength in life. I mean my human strength. To the point that I look like fainting. And I hold the altar like this. I say, Lord, I exchange my strength for your strength. I let people, I gave them a prayer point and I heard the altar. I said, I exchange my strength. And immediately, there was an inflation of grace. Uh, what if I say, I'm, I'm, I'm there? Rome, come and take over this altar. You are going to even fall dead. You're going to die. And that is the heart. May the Lord give you the heart of faith. May you receive the spirit of faith in the ability of God, in the greatness of God, in the name of Jesus. Receive grace to value the word of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord is the strength of my life. In this situation now, you must learn to say that the Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is my shepherd now. And I shall not what? I shall not want. You see God clearing the way to help you. It works. Believe it. If you cannot act in what I'm teaching you, you cannot see God at work. Faith acts. You lay hand on your business now. Say, Rekota Liyama. Lega Kata Karomalaba. Prosper! And from what you think is not, you take a seed of faith. You sow it. Am I coming? That's action of faith. Faith acts. As you are doing it, you are tying the destiny of that business to God. Who owns the whole universe? And then you begin to see unimaginable move of God around your business. 
Somebody else should be learning your physical action. Who knows it is faith that is working? Psalm 46 and verse 1. In that place, it says, God is what? My refuge. It's, you see, it's, most scriptures are general. It is you that must what? Own it. You make it your own. And believe with your whole heart. God is my refuge. And what? It's not just the strength of your pastor. Not just the refuge. It's your own refuge. Can someone say God is my refuge? God, God is my strength. A very present help in time of trouble. Amen. Amen. May you not see trouble in life. In the name of Jesus. It's trouble when you are carrying somebody who is like a dead body. You are carrying to the hospital. And you are saying, God, he must live. But if you are not strong now, you won't be able to see anything. Stop talking to yourself. I want us to be listening to God, okay? I see some children talking to one another there. May the Lord help us. So that number one, what's, what is number one point, everybody? Make the word of God your own action of faith. When you own the word of God, you have transited from mental thinking to supernatural stand on the world. Number two, physically casting your cares upon God. Telling God, take over, daddy. Casting all your care. I didn't say one. That's First Peter chapter 5 and verse 7. See, casting all your cares. Casting all your care upon him. Why? Why, everybody? He cares for you. Never let the devil tell you something different. He cares for you. Listen very carefully. I'll say it again and again because I know it is the truth. He cares about everything concerning your life. He cares about your parent. He cares about your child. He cares about your education. He cares about the job you need. He cares about the need to get married. Have a lovely husband or wife. He cares about everything thing concerning your life. Because the Bible told me, how do you know, pastor? Have you not read your Bible? The book of Jeremiah 29, Abby, verse 11. He said, I know what? The thought that I think to who? Towards you. The thought of peace and not what? And not of evil. To give you what? What is that hey, to give you? A future and a hope. It, many times we are not the one. We are the one not cooperating with God. We are the one. We are the one. We needed to take a decision in the family, and I told them, "Give me between now and Sunday." All of them started laughing at me. Daddy, why? Why is Daddy wanting us to wait? Is today? Wait to today. Let us all. Everybody begin to think with what? With the Holy Spirit. That step of faith. When Daniel went to the king, what did he tell him? He said, give me time. Are you with me? Daniel chapter 2. Now, the king had dreams. Nobody could answer. Nobody could tell the king the dream. And the king was furious. Wanted every astrologer, every stargazer, all the people that are defining for him, including Daniel and to die. He was angry. We are all going to die if you don't know it. And Daniel begged, take me to the king. He went to the king. King, can you give us what? Time. Many of us want to do magic. Don't do magic. Calm down. Anytime you are under pressure, deflate the pressure. What do I say you should do? Blow up the pressure. Say pressure, stop there. Amen. Give me time. Let me relate with the Holy Spirit. And as you begin to read, anytime you calm down under pressure, you are taking a step of faith. Am I communicating? But when you allow the pressure to carry you, disorganize you, confuse you, 
God is not the author of what? Of confusion. You calm down. Then I say, give me time. And the king submitted. Take time. And he went into the Holy Spirit. You must learn to go into God and cast your care on him. Listen to me. Many of us have never acted telling God every little thing, even major thing you have. Sometimes you don't clearly tell God you need them. Very unfortunate. You are a believer, but you don't clearly tell God, I need this. And yet you are complaining. Every time you are grumbling, every time you are complaining, it brings frustration. Hagen was never delivered by his complaint. He eventually died, eventually landed him to know that he was doubting God. He was thinking God is partial. He was thinking he's the only one in trouble in life. Nobody else is facing one. And the Bible told us there is no temptation that you have faced except that which is common to who? To everybody. If you are being tempted for immorality, somebody else is being tempted. If you are being tempted with need for money, somebody else is going to it. The difference in our result is the difference in our response. Amen. Am I communicating? And God is telling you, act in faith. Trust your father with all your heart. Don't lean on your, your understanding will tell you, you know, there are some help now. What do they tell you? They say, yeah, you can borrow five million on the go. How many of you know that now? Hello, are you there? You can borrow, once you supply your document, your ID, your everything, and before you know, boom, 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 loan will land, but that is wahala on your phone. By the time they descend on you, if you don't follow, you will become an object of ridicule and shame in the community. But when it happens like that, and you don't rush, no pressure, there is need, God is bigger than it. Amen? That's action. You first declare, God is what? My God is bigger than all my questions. <coughs> Are you there? Bigger than everything. God is bigger than any mountain. I cannot, cannot see. Bigger than all my problems. Bigger than everything. God is bigger than every mountain. I cannot, cannot see. Amen. Listen to me, those storms that are blowing around you are going to turn to great testimony. It will end your life in praises. It will not end your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. So what is point number two, everybody? Casting all your cares. On who? On the Lord. When you know you don't have a man, I have no man. As the man by the pool said, I have no man. Then you quickly turn, casting your cares on God. And in any time you are speaking to God, he knows what he will do. Amen? Any time you turn to God in faith, he knows what he will do. Number three, action. You are casting your care on God. The next thing is, you must be acting. Acting like a drama. Acting like answer is in your hand. Hallelujah. What is point number three, everybody? Now, you, want, you need money to buy ingredient for your soup and there is no money, your salary is finished. And you go to God, Daddy, we need soup in the house. You are our shepherd. Are you watching me, everybody? We shall not want. You make me to lie down in green pasture. The Bible says, see, and God belong to you. I receive of you a way out in the name of Jesus. Now, to that kind of prayer, what is the next action? 
You go and take your paper. Begin to do your budget for, for the market. Pepe, 500 naira. Mitch, 2,000 naira. What is that, somebody? You are acting as if what? The answer is in your heart. But if you go depressed, you finish prayer and say, <laughs> my children have not taken food this money. Is somebody in the house listening to God today? You begin the budget. You are budgeting on whose power? On the integrity of the Almighty. Amen. May the Lord arise for you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Acting like the answer is in your hand. Amen. Now your wife come to you and say, buy fuel into my car. I'm going out. And you don't have money. Don't worry. Say, be all out. You are going tomorrow, Abby. Don't worry. Fuel will land where? Are you there? Fuel will land where? In your car. <laughs> Praise the Lord. They are going for a wedding yesterday. And I said, eh, don't carry this car, that car. They are not really protesting. There is no fuel there. I said, don't worry. Fuel will be there when you are carrying it. Am I communicating? Now I say, okay, we need, and they prescribe. We need so so amount of what? Of where? Holy Ghost. I look at Holy Ghost. <laughs> I say, Holy Ghost. <laughs> where? And so I instruct them, Sheriff, I'll get back to you. Make sure you get friendly to the car. Money has not gotten to Sheriff. I am acting as if the answer is there. And brethren, I woke up with a deposit or transfer of 50000 in my account and I transfer money. Go and buy fuel. They are going somewhere. <laughs> Acting as if answer has come. Amen. Why? Because he knows I'm the head of that home. I must put me the name and then I, I roll it over to him. As I'm teaching you this morning, may the Lord activate your spirit, man. Somebody is saying, Taluma, send you will say me. I decree today, help of destiny and raise for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, no task here. I won't come back here. Say, Taluma, send you will say me. Send you say pastor. From today, sender of blessing, enter your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. That's how great our father is. He does wondrous things that you cannot imagine. He doesn't fail. I'm telling you, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's every day of fear. I can't afford to live without him. I can't afford it. I cannot, because there are money around me, but there are money I must not touch for my personal need. Is somebody hearing me? Hello? That is life. But to about the same dogma yet to say the heaven will close. You close heaven. It will become like brass. When you are Jacobing people, you are handing somebody else's money to your home. You are turning things upside down. You are already you are sinking yourself. But when you stand in faith on God. The Bible said those who trust in us shall never be what? Be put to shame. Shame is taken away from your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And number four, to close today. Number four, action of faith. You know you are acting like as if the money is in your hand. And be like as if the answer has come. You are prayed, I need healing. One of our daddy came to me in the office and said, so, so persists in this condition, what do we do? I was preparing a message. I was packaging. That appeared like an interruption. And I look at him. I am the pastor. I must answer. And I look at my bag. I found some holy communion material. Are you with me? The bread. And, something. and I say, you, one of the protocol, go and bring me wine there. And I gave him, oh yeah, go and administer it. Amen. 
It works wonder. Action of it. You must be equipped. In your car, there must be anointing oil. Am I communicating? There must be what? You wake up and say, Satan, by the anointing, the yoke is what? It's broken. You should not, you can't afford to be an empty Christian. Empty Christian. Superficial Christian. You must be acting loaded Christian. You are not too young to be strong in God. So the last, last point today, we'll continue when I'm preaching again. Next Sunday, it is building relationships. Somebody, the guest minister is coming. You can remember Pastor Sivin Olukwana. Are you with me? On relationships. It's going to be another wonderful time. It's relationship matter. But upper Sunday is faith again. Because you need faith now to survive. And I'm telling you, difficult time is meant to be miraculous time. May God turn this time to a time of miracles. <laughs> you can't say amen. In your life, in the name of Jesus. So Ephesians 6 10 say, Finally, my brethren, be strong. In who? Be strong in who? As you are demonstrating, dramatizing that the answer has come with a all sense of seriousness. You put on the strength of God. You put on the strength of God. Finally, be strong in God. Be strong in His grace. Be strong in the fact that He cannot fail. And in the power of His might that can turn anything around. You tell her, God is behind me. It must work. You tell all the demons. There are not enough demons in the world that can stop somebody who believes God. Actively, the way I'm telling you, the devil tell you, at that time, what should you be? You'll be strong in who? He's my shepherd. He's coming. You wait and see. You are going to suffer disgrace on this matter, Satan. Amen. Me, I talk as if Satan is standing by my side. It's, it's another time for you to be disgraced in my life. They yeah, are moving forward and I'll be doing the next thing. Any other next thing I should do, I keep doing it. If you are strong in the Lord, when at that point now you are singing, amen, you begin to sing. You don't begin to think depressing thoughts. You begin to sing. You begin to sing. You must be alive. It will hand up in praise. It we hand up in praise. I'm composing song. <laughs> Every storm blowing all around me. Hey, it we hand up in praise. You are putting on God's strength when you are saying that. You are, you are standing and saying, Satan, you can't have the way. My God is going to what? Have the way. It we hand up in praise. Amen. Each we hand up in prayer. Every storm blowing around me. Each we hand up in prayer. Hallelujah. Each we hand up in prayer. Do you believe it? Each we hand up in prayer. Every storm. Sure. It's we hand up in prayer. 
house. You believe every storm is going to hand up in praise. Now I decree, receive that breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Every condition going around your life that appear to have created problem, I command, it becomes a testimony for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody can say, I put on the strength of God. And in the name of the Lord, I can do all things through Christ. Even under this difficult condition, I prosper. I flourish. Everything begins to work in my favor. Everything begins to work in my favor. For the Lord of us is with me. For the Lord is my strength. For the Lord is my glory. Everything must work. For testimony in my life. I trust in the Lord. And so it shall be for me. Amen. Now as you step out of this church today. I command a step into the miraculous. Within the next seven days, what you have not been able to resolve for the last seven years, I declare them resolving your favor. That long door that you have been knocking for close to 21 years, within the next seven days, I command by the hand of the one who set up the universe. Who sent Jesus to die on the cross and he declared it is finished? I command the door open for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now confusion is lifted off your life. Receive direction by the Spirit of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. That critical need in your life, I command. The Lord step into it for you. I said the Lord step into it for you. That need is met in the name of Jesus. It is met in the name of Jesus. Next Sunday you are coming to this altar to give testimony. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare you blessed. In the name of the Father. And of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.